Monday to Friday at 12.30 p.m. Only on Bloomberg Quint. Welcome to Bloomberg Quint. You're watching the fine print. 40% of listed public interest entities were found to have at least one finding, meaning significant failure to satisfy the requirements of auditing standards. That's as per the 2018 survey by the International Forum of Independent Audit Regulators. World over, auditors are facing regulatory scrutiny. In the US, General Electric is under pressure to sever ties with KPMG, the company's auditor for 109 years after the SEC initiated an investigation into GE's accounting practices. Carillion's collapse in the UK has led to scathing criticism of its external and internal auditors, KPMG and Deloitte respectively. Back home too, the big four have drawn considerable flack from shareholders and regulators last year. Whether it is for the negligence in ILNFS case or for inadequate explanation for their resignations in the case of Vakrangi, Manpasan Beverage and Atlanta. To talk about these developments and whether there's a fix to audit failures world over, I'm joined by Keith Farlinger, Global CEO, BDO International. Keith, welcome to India. You know, despite the various reforms that we keep talking about in India, in the UK and Europe, uh, we keep coming back, Keith, to the same problem, that the auditors didn't do enough in flagging off concerns in time to potentially prevent a collapse like that in Carillion in the UK or Island FS in India. How do we fix this? Yes, uh, for sure, uh, auditors are in the spotlight uh, for all of those regions. And um, as a former auditor and now leading um, one of the top firms, we, we acknowledge that we need to continue to improve audit quality. And I think that's the message uh, that all the regulators are coming up with as well, is that we all need to work together to improve audit quality. Uh, so that the markets can be confident that audits are, are done correctly. And what steps to your mind have, let's say, the big four and the Grand Thornton and the BDOs of the world have taken uh, in terms of how you deal with businesses to be able to say that where we were on the same conversation three or four years ago, we have made some progress from there on? Yeah, so um, auditing, like every other um, profession, is evolving. Um, we are we have much better tools than we did in the past. Uh, we've invested uh, 80 million dollars uh, in our new audit tool. Uh, as well, we have such things as data analytics and artificial intelligence, and we're able to use those tools to do better Give me audits. an example. Give me an example how something you couldn't catch earlier, you're able to uh, better employ these tools to do that today. Absolutely. So uh, auditing a lot has in the past has been based on testing. So we do a, a statistical sample of uh, transactions to determine uh, whether there's errors or not. Uh, now with data analytics, we can actually review all the transactions of a company and use data analytics to point ones that are irregular. So rather than just sampling with that analytics and artificial intelligence, we can get a better picture of the overall organization. Okay, all right. So that is one, uh, you know, data set that you can analyze using these tools. That, but one problem that you know some of the auditors uh, have pointed to in India is that uh, they got inadequate information from the company's management. Now, some of these auditors have been with the respective companies. The cases that I pointed out for years at end, uh, some of whom have taken these co companies public, uh, and then when these auditors come to the shareholders and say, "Hey, we didn't have in, uh, adequate information," and so. So uh, we're washing our hands of the company. How have regulators, let's say in some of the mature jurisdictions, uh, been able to deal with this problem? Yeah, so uh, for example, I would use the US because they've been tackling these issues for a while. Um, it's not easy for the auditor just to resign. Uh, so uh, if an auditor uh, resigns, then the SEC does get involved at that point in time. And they verify the reasons uh, that are valid, verify the reasons that they are valid. 
uh, for the resignation. So the auditor just can't say, oh, I'm resigning because uh, I don't have adequate information. They have to provide proof and, and, and so on to the SEC uh, to support that kind of uh, resignation. Okay. Um, uh, how, have your, how has your experience been when it comes to your India team when they tell you uh, that majority of businesses in India are promoter driven? Uh, does that pose a specific uh, geography challenge for BDO in India compared to let's say US and elsewhere where you know it's more management run businesses? Yeah, I, I think uh, it sounds like uh, what you're describing is there's lots more new businesses and they're being you know brought up and, and they're just going public now. Uh, so it's, it's no even established companies, which yeah. major, ma majority of them are promoted in India, vis-a-vis -vis, let's say U.S., which are more professionally run. Right. So that's that's a big difference. Uh, it's interesting that uh, we we see a lot of that in China as well, another developing uh, market, um, and so we need to figure out ways uh, of doing that because the auditor can't. Um, can't find everything. Uh, they're not the only piece of the audit puzzle. Uh, one of the things that, again, the U.S. and Canada have done very well is uh, they put uh, put some responsibility on the directors of the company. So these professionally driven companies, it's not just the company itself. It's the outside directors, and they bring independence issues and so on uh, to the fray. So uh, if we have an issue as an auditor in Canada. Uh, we don't go to the management and say, oh, well, you have to give us inform the information. We go to the independent directors and say, look, this is the issues that we're having, and that helps to balance things out. And I would, I would think that if, if, if we use things like outside directors in India, that will help get over the promoter well, we get, piece. We get equally evasive responses from independent directors <laughs> on their resignations in India too, so I'm not sure how much that approach will work back uh, home here. Yeah, uh, again, it, it has worked uh, in, uh, uh, in the U.S. and Canada and the U.K. Uh, I've not talked a lot with our firm here about specifically how they are dealing with it, so I can't really comment on that. But I can see the issue that, it, that promoters versus professional managed and uh, directed firms uh, is an additional challenge. Okay, uh, we we undertook uh, you know a bunch of audit reforms through our Companies Act, uh, you know uh, through the 2013 Companies Act, whether in terms of audit rotation, in terms of the non-audit services that you can provide to an audit client, uh, both qualitatively and quantitatively. How have uh, these reforms impacted your practice? Um, you know, I think uh, it is impacting our practice. Uh, interesting enough, uh, five years ago in India, we didn't have much of an audit practice. So in terms of rotation, uh, we're not rotating out of anything. And there's lots of opportunities, obviously, uh, for us to pick up uh, more work on the audit space. Um, it's interesting. Uh, you know, audit rotation uh, also, I think, helps the, uh, the whole auditor profession in a way. Uh, there is a perception if you've been the auditor for 10, 15, 20 years, you're too, too close to the client. And so I think with the new audit rotation rules, that will take some of that perception or reality away uh, so that they'll bring, you know, uh, bring a new independent firm in. I think the other thing is, and it's, it's um, uh, probably we'll see more in the years going uh, ahead, but if you know you're going to be rotated out in a short period of time, if you know that another firm is going to come in and look at some of the judgments and so on that you've made, um, you will probably spend a little bit more time making sure those are the right judgments. So again, I think that the, they will have a positive effect uh, going forward on, on audits in India. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, you know, let me look a little outwards in what's happening in the UK market. Uh, you know, an in independent review of the Financial Reporting Council, which is the UK's audit regulator, uh, c this report concluded that the FRC uh, is not fit for purpose. It's too close to the big four uh, to objectively, uh, you know, regulate the space. Uh, are there learnings from this report that India can borrow from? Uh, like I mentioned, we do have the independent authority in terms 
terms of NFRA here, uh, so which is sort of fairly uh, far removed from what's happening in the commercial world in, in terms of the big four. But are there lessons from how the FRC has been functioning that could be useful for the Indian market? Uh, absolutely. I think um, it, this review is, is, a, is a good one because you take something, the FRC, that's been around for a while and you say, look, things have changed, uh, the, the economy's changed, the way people have looked at audits and so on. So let's re-look at the regulator and see if there's things that we could do differently. Um, I, I liken it to, you know, taking a clean sheet of paper and if we're going to draw it up today, here's how we would draw it up. And that's exactly what you're doing. You're, you're doing it today. So I think there's a great opportunity for you to learn um, from the Kingman Review and, and the review of the FRC. I think also, uh, you know, the PCOB and all the learnings that they went through uh, that, that caused them to come in uh, a number of years ago. So for sure, one of the big things uh, that the Kingman said is that, uh, you know, they are reviewing the big firms, but if you look at the people in the FRC, they're all from the big firms. Sure. So um, I think in, in choosing uh, the people who are going to be part of your regulator, they truly have to be independent. And that's hard sometimes to find because the, 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 the big firms do all the large audits, so how do you know uh, whether, whether to review them or not? But I think that's one of the biggest learnings is, uh, number one, choosing who should be doing the review. Um, I think that um, as well that whatever you system you end up with, you can't kind of say, okay, we're going to do this for the next 10 years. You probably have to do a review in, in three or four years and say, okay, what's working, what's no, not working? Uh, are the audits getting better? Is independence getting better? So that review cycle has to be a lot quicker. You have, you, you can't let it go for a long period of time. Keith, I also understand that uh, the uh, auditing standards uh, itself is under review in the UK. Could you take me through as to uh, what exactly is the mandate for this uh, body when it comes to reviewing how uh, and what auditing standards mandate? Yeah, so uh, there is another study underway. Uh, it's not like the Kingman in that it hasn't been uh, released yet. Um, but they're looking at, you know, auditing and financial statements themselves and whether uh, they should be changed uh, at all. So it'll be an interesting one to watch um, um, because I think it comes back to are we delivering value um, uh, to the shareholders in terms of uh, the financial statements and what we're currently delivering. Uh, and again, we, these, these have been around for a long time, so it's, it's time to have, uh, to have a look at it. Okay, and uh, let's say principally speaking, uh, what should be the changes that uh, this committee could look at perhaps? So I'll, I'll give you some of my personal opinion on that. Um, you know, traditionally, traditionally uh, financial statements have been historic based on the history. Uh, and the world is moving so fast. Um, they've already incorporated the history into the stock prices and, and so on. So these financial statements um, are, have questionable value by the time that really, or they're released. So I would think that things that are more forward-looking um, uh, would be something that shareholders would probably be interested in. And a simple example would be an aircraft company, uh, currently we audit the financial statements and people look at them, or they probably don't look at the financial statements. Uh, but if you look at the company like that, what is really of value, probably their order book would be very interesting. And investors would like to know, you know, that those 500 or orders, uh, are they really true? Because that's going to affect the future value of the company and auditors could attest on that order book. Um, so I think there's, we, we need to start thinking about how, uh, what future orientated information that would be of value uh, to investors um, and how, you know, what auditors could do in, in, in that regard. All right, Keith, I'll leave it at that. Thank you for sharing us uh, and giving us your perspective on what's happening in some of the developed markets and your view on India. And thank you so much for watching.